Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! So, as I was saying, here's the colors of nighttime. And then we go inside and light things up. And here are the colors of a really dark cave. Still using the same color scheme, but the darkness of overallness makes things a little bit different. By the way, it is Strikeback who is now reciting in the PC. And there are Victory Bell in the water. Easy peasy for our dragon turned bird. Even though Gyarados isn't technically a dragon, it should have been though. As much effort as it takes to try and raise a Magikarp into a Gyarados, it really should have been a, po a dragon Pokemon, especially with there being so few dragon Pokemon. Okay, time to use Waterfall. <laughs> I, I, I knew it was going to be like that, but that is still kind of silly. You would think you would just surf up it, but nope. Twirl. Okay, well here we are in the upper portion of Mount Mortar. There's gonna be a lot of exploration here. It's a bit of a maze in fact. Trying to figure out where to go here and there. Surf being required in order to get around. And ledges all over the place. So there's an item there. And from here we head onto the right. So what Pokemon do we have on this level of this here cave? Oh, it's gonna be the same Pokemon as the lower level. But a much higher level! Okay then! Hmm. Spiteful Crow says they should make an unknown for every letter in the alphabet in a different language. You know, there's an interesting thought. Even in Japan, the unknown were English letters. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why. Also, I might have to come in and help out against the... Nido Kings, cause oh boy, that thrash kinda strong. And then we have whoopers. These cuties are not as much a concern. Spiteful Crow says it would be a pain to collect them all. It's already a pain to collect all the unknown. Because they all appear in the same location. So you have to try to hope that one of the 26 that you do not have yet will be popping up. There is a bit of a reward for collecting them all. It allows you to use the Game Boy printer and print messages. So not actually a great reward. That is a Machamp. That is a level 32 Machamp. How do you think you're going to handle this, Gyarados? How your chance of critical hit is kind of scary. But as it turns out... Machamp is surprisingly a pushover. Okay, considering Gyarados is the weakest Pokemon on this team, that is kind of impressive. Uh, this way, I think. And there's more Dratini up here. 
You know, there was a trainer that we fought earlier that kind of brought up something interesting. I didn't think of it at the time, but she said that she doesn't try to make her Pokemon fight hard because she doesn't like her Pokemon getting hurt. And my reaction is, well, that's kind of what happens when you have Pokemon battles, Miss Pokemon Trainer. But I was thinking about it some more, and it's like... Here I am, being a Pokemon, allowing myself to get hurt in these battles. I am not really a fan of getting hurt, I do not like fighting, and the pain of being hurt is definitely a reason why. Yet yeah, here I am being a Pokemon! I love the idea of being a Pokemon and getting into battles. And I've been thinking about why. Part of it definitely has to be the coolness factor of having these superpowers. Being able to, like, hack a giant ball of poo- uh, of, 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 Poison. Poison? At my opponents and using my mind to damage my opponents. Shooting these confusing waves of water out of my mouth in a song. Being a Pokemon is just cool. TM44 was that? What's that? Rest? Sleep for two turns to fully recover. Combined with a berry that makes you wake back up, that would certainly be useful. I kinda had to wonder if I would actually enjoy being a Pokémon if I actually really became one and had to go into battles. Like, here I am right now. Gyarados, we've discovered, is not in a great position to be fighting Nidokings. So here I am, being shot out of this Pokéball as pure energy to go up against this Pokemon who is suddenly kicking me out of- in my face the moment I pop out. Now, being type advantage, it is certainly not a big deal. It's kind of like a slap on the face to me. But still, I don't like being slapped on the face, yet here I am, willingly allowing myself to go into battle against these, this thing. But it is fun, because I am using me being the opposite gender of this male Pokemon to kind of entice it into falling in love with me, just so that I can use the power of my mind to take it out. Sure, I am getting hit along the way, but it's worth it. There's a sense of enjoyment using this stuff. I am powerful! And it is fun testing out this power. Legally, in fact. If this was more like a superhero show, probably would get in trouble if I went to everywhere knocking people around with the power of my mind. But here, that's the entire point. I get to show off my power. And I can definitely take Thrash a lot better than my bird partner. Stripeback says, Attraction is a weird mechanic. Are there no gay Pokémon? Um... I guess not. Hypothetically, there might be. At the very least, there are non-gendered Pokémon. A track doesn't really work on Magnemite. Okay, where am I in... ...this maze here? I have a walkthrough that I wrote down so that I know where to go. Uh, 
Oh boy. Uh, not entirely sure how this is going to work out. Gyarados does have something that would work against the Dragonite, but... Last Dragonite battle did not go entirely in Gyarados' favor. Not going so well here, either. But Gyarados is up to the task. After drinking some lemonade. I suppose that's another thing about being a trainer's Pokemon. Depending on who we're talking about, anyway. The Pokemon tends to keep good care of you. Healing you. Letting you drink lemonade in the middle of a fight. Granted, being paralyzed would certainly suck. There's also the luxury aspect. Sure, you are being sent into battle, but in between battles, you get to ride inside this supposedly comfortable Pokeball everywhere you go. You don't have to do any walking, you're just kind of relaxing until it is time to fight. Okay, as fun as it would be to bite my opponents, the moveset that I have now... Well, let me look here. Yeah, there's nothing I want to replace here. Uh, up is where we're gonna go here. There's going to be an item here. Speaking of paralysis, nice that society has these items that can instantly cure it. And then this is a max potion. Uh, by the way, Maddie says attract is less about being appealing and more about using pheromones, etc., to sort of get the biological part rather than just looking good, I think. Hmm. That does bring up a thought. Do pheromones always work? I mean, there is such a thing as asexual people. I myself am asexual. question is, do humans produce the correct amount of pheromones in order to have the same effect as, say, animals do? Maddie also says, fun fact, Maddie was a captured escapee from Team Rocket before I knew about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. You know, there are actually a lot of Team Rocket fans out there. As weird as that is, there are people out there who would be depicting themselves as Pokemon belonging to Team Rocket or as trainers among Team Rocket. It is kind of interesting. There's, it's probably like uh, the gangster aspect to it. Being a gangster seems cool. And so there are people who would fantasize about that. In fact, Strikeback says, well, who doesn't like Yakuza? That is a good example. Maddie says, well, it's easy to imagine someone being duped in by the promise of protect the world from devastation and unite all peoples within our nation. Exact, that motto is wrong. Jesse and James have it wrong. 
and the actual motto, motto is, I think, infect the world with devastation and something else like that. So I feel like somewhere we took a wrong turn. I am 90% we took a wrong turn somewhere. And we're gonna figure out where that wrong turn was after this fight. Uh, I'm gonna need healed anyway. Hey, uh, Rubber Boy, mind if I have some... No, not that. Lemonade. I want to drink some lemonade. Uh, the, the downside to being a trainer's Pokemon in this particular adventure... My trainer is a robot. Just an emotionless robot who is just programmed to take good care of us. Why did that have to be a critical hit? That kind of hurt, you know? I need to be just a little bit stronger so I can take you out in two hits. More lemonade, please! Dang critical hit. Oh gosh, dang it! Yes, be confused. Finish yourself off to make up for all that other stuff that was going on. No? Well, I mean, I guess I can also accept that. Oh, wait a sec. I should try Surf against you guys sometime. I was so thinking about the poison aspect that I forgot that... Yeah, we evolve into ground-type Pokémon. Okay, so there was definitely a wrong turn taken somewhere. Where was it? Uh, we need some repel. At least we know this is a Pokémon that Gyarados can handle. Some of these fights, though, we're probably gonna run away from until I can get us back on track. Unless the Pokémon is, like, really easy. For example... Maddie says, in Gen 1 at least, Team Rocket was trying to protect the world from devastation from Mewtwo at least. Tripex says, wasn't that only in the anime? I don't think Team Rocket had anything to do with Mewtwo in the games. Maddie says Mewtwo torched Pokemon Master uh, Mansion in Cinnabar and fled. Yeah, but was Team Rocket actually involved with that? Team Rocket was never mentioned in Cinnabar, as far as I'm aware. And of course, in the anime, Team Rocket is definitely who created Mewtwo. And Giovanni was trying to control Mewtwo, and then in the sequel, trying to recapture it. Never saw that one, by the way. The sequel, that is.
I heard that it has baby Nidal Queen. Kind of weird until you consider that we're talking about clones. Hmm, would be interesting if Team Rocket's plot was tied to Mewtwo in Let's Go. I could totally see them doing that. It would be Dragon Rage. Any other attack you could have survived, but Dragon Rage, guarantee 40. Alright, I forgot we gave Rekus Fly. Why did you miss? You weren't supposed to miss. Paralyzed too? Yep, paralyzed too. <sighs> well, it's a good thing I had Rubber Boy keep some revives on hand. I just had a feeling that at some point in here, somebody was going to get taken out. So, let's go ahead and recover real quick. And actually, as, while, while we're recovering, let's go ahead and head into our second episode break of today's stream. And when we come back from this break, we're going to find that Pokemon that somebody is going to be giving us. <laughs> 